everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Loud and clear. Yes. Can you believe that this boy never crossed the threshold of the classroom? He has never been to school. Yet, he speaks English. He uses a phone. He uses a computer. He does all these things as well as any other educated people. Why and how? Because of his sheer determination. His determination to change his life. When he first came to Jodhra Gamaya, he thought his life was a complete waste. He thought he was a complete goner because everyone had told him he's useless. He cannot do a thing because he's uneducated. I spoke to him, I counseled him, and I told him that your life is in your hands. It's not too late, Anish. So what if you've not been to school? You can still go. You can still study. You can still do a lot of things. It's up to you. It's up to us. I grew up. I studied hard. I wanted to make that change. But then, in the path of my growth, I lost one of my most important building blocks, my mother herself. And then, I thought, I have another building block, my father. But unfortunately, he had to respond to his call of the nation. He had to go for the Kargil War. I was again left alone at a crossroad, dejected. Who will I turn to now? But still, a little voice was ringing inside me. Don't give up. Don't give up. Go ahead. It's never too late. Keep your hopes high. I did just that. I kept my hopes high. I completed my studies. Then I went on to do my BA in special education because I wanted to fulfill my dream of Changing that classroom setup, bringing those backbenchers to the front bench. It wasn't easy. I started my project as a mobile blind school. And that meant that I was traveling to houses of blind people in the nooks and corners of Kerala. I went to their homes. I spoke to them. I spoke to their parents. They were also discouraged and discriminated and dejected. I counseled them and I tried to instill in them the confidence that they can be front benchers. They can be superheroes. Some of them understood. Some parents began to understand that I was talking sense, but some thought I was talking complete nonsense. I went to some of those schools and I saw many backbenchers and many teachers who reminded me of my old teacher. I tried to speak to them too. I tried to make that change. Some accepted it. Some just ignored me. I continued. I continued to tell myself, it's never too late. Don't give up. These were the words that instilled in me that drive to make that change. I expanded my project. I started a training center. And now, we have a fully-fledged training center where we train blind people in all those skills they need to come to the front bench, to be useful and productive citizens, to come where? To come to that front bench, to leave the back bench behind, and to come to the front bench, not only in school, but in their lives. Yes, this is how Anish has now come to the front bench. Despite him not going to school, not seeing a classroom. Yes. I'm sure you all heard the way he speaks English, right? Yes. That is the change. That is change. But we all need two hands to clap. Two stones to strike a fire. It's not only us. It's not only the government. All of us just sit there and say, Oh, our lives are so bad. Oh, 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 the government should do this. But it's not only the government. It's we who have to do it along with the government. I traveled from 
state to state, country to country, unaided, with my white cane that I hold right now. And during one of these travels, I went to Europe. I participated in a discussion at the European Parliament about disabilities and change makers. I also saw the European roads. They were great, they were accessible, they were smooth. There were guidelines on the roads, there were buttons that help us to cross the road without help. For the first time in my life, I could cross a road without a care in the world. No cars coming in front or behind. I pressed the button, I heard the sound, and I crossed the road. It was great. I was thrilled. A lot of people told me, I'll oh, stay here, you'll get a job. I was like, no, I have to go back to my country and try to take something from you guys and try to implement it in my own country. I came back. And I met our honorable governor. I spoke to him about the problems that we face about accessibility. According to Article 9 of the UNCRPD, we have equal rights to access of, of, of goods and services. Everything should be accessible. Buildings, goods, services, public places, transport, everything. Are we really doing that? Have you seen the footpaths in Trivandrum? Do they look like footpaths? Do they? Why? Can a blind person, can any of you close your eyes and walk on that footpath? No, because it's full of slabs and stones and sticks and water pools. You name it, it's there, except a proper place to walk. This is a hindrance. I hope the government does something about it. But the government can only do something if some people like us, not only me, but we blind people make our voices heard. We are not doing that. We are just sitting in the four walls of our houses waiting for everyone to do something for us. The supermarkets in Europe, they are accessible. The price tags of things are written in Braille. People help us as soon as we enter that supermarket. People are helping us. They're asking us what we want. Why? Because blind people regularly go there. They buy things for themselves. Here, we depend on someone to take us, to buy things for us. And what is our excuse? It's not accessible. What do we do? Unless we go out there and do something, people are not going to help us. I take my students now regularly to the supermarket and to the shops. Now they go themselves. And now, the first time they went, people were unresponsive. They just didn't know how to handle these blind people. I mean, why were they wasting their time? The second time, the same response. But the third time, people started understanding that these blind people can't do it. They need help. They need empathy. So people started coming forward and helping. It's only if we take that initiative will everyone stand behind us. So we have to do that. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to bring about that change. But I can't do it alone. I need my fellow blind colleagues and I need you all to support me in that change that I want to make. Adventure. Adventure isn't yet another hindrance in front of us. We don't see too many blind people engaged in sports activities, especially girls. We are continuously cautioned by our parents. Don't do this, don't do that, don't play, don't run, you'll fall, it's dangerous. I couldn't do that when I was small. I couldn't run and play and jump and hop and skip. No one allowed me to. I was like isolated. When my friends went out to play, I was made to just stand there in a corner and watch them run and play ball and everything. But now I've grown up. I can. I can do things. I have flown inside a plane. I have jumped from 4,000 feet high. I have flown in the air. I have flown in the air like a bird with both my hands touching the air. It was like bliss, an indescribable victory. I was flying like a bird without a care in the world. That was skydiving. Of course, I had an instructor with me and we had fun. I have also done paragliding, rope climbing, wall climbing, 
and tandem cycling. The tandem cycling experience was something thrilling in itself. I've always wanted to drive and ride a cycle myself, and I couldn't do that. This time, even though I had a tandem, I had someone in front of me, I could do it. I felt like I was riding that cycle. I was on that road, pedaling. My dear life, yes, I was there. People told me, you can't do that. You can't cycle. You won't even reach your destination. There's too much traffic, even if you have a tandem. I said, no, and I did it. People told me, you can't climb that wall, you'll just fall. But I did it. People told me, you can't go rope riding, it's dangerous. I did it. People told me, skydiving, oh Lord, you can't. I did it. I said no to all those negative thoughts, all those negative instructions. And I said, yes, I can do it. I did it. So adventure is not a hindrance. Excuse me, I'd like to Blindness is not a hindrance for adventure. Every blind person, every disabled person has the right to adventure. We can enjoy our lives. We can have adventure. We can do sports and recreation. We can do it as well as any other person. We just need to have certain adaptations. We can play cricket. There's so many blind cricket players. We can play cricket as long as we have a sound ball. We can do tandem cycling and skydiving and paragliding as long as we have a tandem. We can feel those things. Just let us feel them. Stop stopping us. Because what we need here is empathy, not sympathy. Equal treatment. We need that zest. We need that drive. But that has to come from within us and from you. I conduct awareness programs. I've even blindfolded people. I've, they have seen us. They have seen our lives from their perspective. Yes, it was great. So people understood that, yes, the life of a blind person is like this. But that's not for sympathy. That's for empathy. So that they can also come out there with us and make that change. I hope you all can. Because it's not only I, I, who can do it. It's only if you all stand with me, I can do that. Will you all join with me? Will you all help me make that change? Because I can't do it alone. Nothing can be done alone. As the proverb says, United we stand, divided we fall. Yes, we have to make that change. Our father of the nation said, Be the change you want to see. Don't only talk about change, but go out there and be that change. Because you can, we can. Our life is in our hands. And it's never too late. Even if we are 50 years old, we can go to school. It's up to us to make that change, to make that difference, and to make our lives worth living. Thank you.